Hello and welcome to what I hope to be the first of uh, a series in DIY uh, videos. Uh, for those of you that have seen my previous videos directly on YouTube, you may have noticed that in the comments that uh, a fair amount of my Eurorack system is uh, DIY, either from a kit or from designs I've come up with myself. Uh, Today I want to talk about a module that uh, I did not come up with the original concept. That was done, uh, originally done by Tombola back in uh, 2011. Uh, he posted uh, code for this module on Muff Wiggler. Uh, and this is a Euclidean polyrhythm generator. Uh, the uh, layout is very similar to the um, original uh, format. Uh, done by, I believe it was Sneak Thief. Uh, but anyway, this, uh, this module has gone through several uh, generations since 11. Uh, first by Sneak Thief and then uh, by Cincy. In fact, I believe he offered kits uh, for a while. And then the most recent iteration of this has been by Craig Lee, or Klee as he's known on Muff Wiggler, uh, in which he developed a 4U version of the module. Um, which included uh, several enhancements that I really liked, including um, the ability to have a density output, which is based upon how many triggers are happening at the same time. Uh, there's a uh, relative voltage that's generated uh, in proportion to the, uh, the coinciding triggers. And then, uh, the feature that really intrigued me was his MIDI implementation. And so uh, with that, uh, I thought that was really fantastic, except of course it was for 4U format, not Eurorack. And in some email correspondence with Craig, I, uh, I found out that the reason he did that when he did this a couple of years ago was that he didn't want to uh, intrude on the space that had been created for the Eurorack versions at the time. Uh, however, in correspondence with uh, him and uh, Sneak Thief and Cincy, um, it was agreed, uh, yeah, go for it. Uh, go ahead and do a version for Eurorack. Now, this was originally for my own use, but um, everybody agreed that, yeah, go ahead and post uh, when you're, when you're uh, finished with it on uh, some site. I use GitHub and so hopefully in a few months I'll have uh, both the board design and the code posted to GitHub. But uh, what I want to talk about today, this is my implementation of Craig's design. The uh, electrical design is nearly verbatim for what Craig did uh, with some enhancements to allow some features that I thought would be really nice to have in this unit. And I'll talk about that as I go through this. So to begin with, uh, one of the first things that Craig did was uh, he implemented a switchable trigger uh, slash gate feature, uh, which he used a uh, toggle switch. I've used a uh, latchable double pull, double throw uh, push button switch. Uh, but the thing that I wanted to add was some LED indicators to show which um, which type of uh, clock was being generated. I should mention the original Eurorack version only offered a uh, trigger out, regardless of whether you were using the internal or the external clock. Um, in this version, in Craig's version and mine, at this point, uh, the gate version, which is a 50% duty cycle, uh, is derived from the external clock, and so it's not generated um, when you use the internal clock. So if you switch it to the gate version on the internal clock, you do not get a signal out. So um, that's a feature I'd like to look at implementing in code, but I haven't got to that point yet. Uh, but at least I have the LED indicators to show which mode I'm in. Uh, so currently we're in the trigger mode. I'm going to go ahead and turn up the sound. Um, uh, right now I'm running the output through the MIDI uh, into a uh, 1010 bit box using the acoustic kit uh, samples. And so I'm, ba I'm running uh, a basic uh, 
two-piece kit with hi-hat, open and closed. And this is running off of the internal clock. So um, the next feature I wanted to add was uh, an actual reset button. Uh, the, design, the designs that have been out there uh, implemented a reset uh, circuit, but it required it, an input signal. This still has that. Uh, but I thought for performance, wouldn't it be nice to be able to manually trigger this as well if you wanted to, if you didn't have a cable plugged in. That's what the uh, square button up here is. So I'll press that. And as you can see, it's um, constantly re-triggering at the beginning of the cycle. And when I release it, it, it uh, resumes from the beginning of the cycle. So that was my next... Uh, that, was, that was the second thing I implemented. Both of these uh, are just simple hardware hacks, honestly. Um, nothing too special about them. Um, the next thing, however, that I wanted to implement um, took a little bit of, of extra coding, and that was it bothered me that in all the implementations up to this point, if you plug in an external clock, the uh, internal clock would cease to function. So what I'm going to do, uh, I've, I've implemented a cable to text circuit. And I'll show this uh, to you here in a second. Basically what I did was in Craig's design he utilized a, uh, a hex inverter chip. That's uh, six inverter gates um, to buffer several functions. Uh, actually the MIDI and I believe the clock. Uh, that left two gates left over that were unused. I tied those gates to um, the uh, switchable connection on the uh, uh, 3.5 millimeter jack and used that to detect whether a cable was plugged in or not and applied it to an extra channel on the Arduino. So now when you plug in an external clock, it switches to the speed of that. This is coming from my math. Um, and obviously I can control my clock speed from there. But now, if I remove this cable, that detection circuit will allow me to return back to the internal clock. So I thought that was a, a nice feature. Um, but then I realized, well, it's great, I have an internal clock back, but I had no control over the speed. So in further analyzing the code, uh, the encoder switches utilize a, um, a voltage divider circuit to detect which encoder has been pressed. And there was some space left in there uh, for an extra voltage level that uh, if it were detected, you could write some code uh, to do something with that. And I realized that if I did that, I could implement a, uh, a, a, some code to change the beats per minute. And so that's what I did. Now that required a, a, a third button, or excuse me, a, a, an extra button beyond the encoders. That's the round button right here. Um, and a couple extra resistors. But when I press that, uh, if you take a look at the second from the bottom row, the pattern changes. Uh, it's just an arbitrary pattern to indicate that I'm in BPM mode. Now, if I turn the top encoder, as you can hear, the speed increases when I go to the right, or decreases when I go to the left. And so now we have control over the beats per minute on the internal clock. Um, obviously, there's several advantages to that. First of all, um, I think it offers a great deal more flexibility to the module. Secondly, um, if you mult the uh, channel one signal and the, um, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of it, the, uh, the opposite output from uh, the, uh, the offset, from channel one. If you combine those two in a mixer, uh, you can basically have a, a clock signal that can drive the rest of your, of your system, if you like. 
And uh, in fact, I'm using that concept uh, in a patch I'm working on right now. So um, instead of driving from an external clock, you could actually drive your system from the internal clock of the module now. Um, and then lastly, the, uh, the final feature that I included was um, the way to hook up the MIDI. Uh, in Craig's version, of course, being in 4U, he had plenty of space for a DIN MIDI connection. I really didn't want to increase the HP size of the module as it's been uh, implemented before. I believe it's either 12 or, or 14 HP. Um, a DIN MIDI connector would have made that fairly large. Um, so instead of going with DIN, I went with TRS MIDI. But as several, of, many of you out there may uh, be aware, there's two implementations of TRS MIDI, um, and both versions have been recognized by the MIDI Association. Uh, the one is called A, and the other one is Type B. Um, and modules out there are somewhat evenly divided between the two that use TRS cables. Well, to get around that problem, I decided I would implement a switch uh, similar to the one that I'm using for the gate trigger switch. In this case, I swap the signals around uh, because really all it is is a, a swap between the, the tip and the ring. So by just swapping those back and forth, you can use either uh, TRS type A cable uh, MIDI connections or TRS type B and it will work just fine. I've tested that in both configurations and as you can tell uh, going into the bit box that, that works just great. So these are the changes I've made. Uh, that button by the way for the MIDI is down here. Um, this is still my first uh, full paneled up Eurorack version. Uh, this is implemented in a two beat uh, PCB set. Uh, it's all through hole. Uh, there were several errors I made in transcribing Craig's schematic uh, and that resulted in a few green wires to the circuit, as well as green wires to implement some of the other new features that I finally came up with. So I'm planning a uh, second revision of the PCB set. Currently, as I mentioned, this is all through hole. I did that to make it easier for other builders out there to build these model modules. However, uh, if you uh, feel differently about that and would like to see me do that instead in a surface, surface mount version of the boards, let me know in the comments, either on Muff Wiggler or on the uh, YouTube channel for this video. Uh, let me know how you, what you think of that, how you feel, uh, and I'll, I'll strongly consider uh, trying to do it both ways or uh, make a choice between one or the other. Um, in either case, I plan on trying to have this wrapped up uh, and finalized uh, within the next six months. Uh, the other thing I'm look, taking a look at are the ergonomics and obviously component selection, things like that, uh, to finish up this, this design. I do have one other playability um, idea that I've had, and that is to implement a pause uh, feature both uh, in a, uh, has a, uh, basically a, a double throw switch, one side being momentary and the other side being locked in so that you could actually pause the sequence if you like. I thought that would be a great playability feature. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what you think about the ideas I've talked about. And uh, thank you for watching.